learners, in the last session, we got to know about the definition and various types of wetlands. In this session, we will discuss Ramsar sites, various aspects of wetlands and the concept of Amrit Dharohar. On the screen, there are two ecosystems. On the left is a vibrant forest teeming with life. And on the right, we see a majestic sea, no less in the diversity of life it hosts. But have you ever thought about where do these ecosystems last? What happens at places where they meet? Let us explore the answers to these questions. These are the places where land meets water. We see that such places take the character of both land and water, resulting in their own unique identity. They are their own ecosystems and we know them as wetlands. Learners, tell me one thing. Have you ever seen a lake, a pond, a daldal, a marsh or a mangrove? All these are in fact different types of wetlands formed by varying interactions between land and water. These interactions include glacial activity, tectonic movements due to the zigzag movement of rivers or due to collection of water in craters and pits. Do you know Human-made wetlands are constructed for specific purposes such as irrigation, drinking, for fish or for recreation and include reservoirs, aquaculture, ponds, salt pans, dams, barrages and impoundments are some examples of human-made wetlands. Let us now try to understand the distribution of wetlands. India has nearly 5% of its land area as wetlands. Are these wetlands of the same type? To your surprise, no is the answer. There are many kinds of wetlands in India and they are called by many different names from the high altitude wetlands of Himalayas to the saline flats of the west from the spongy spangs in Ladakh to the fish berries of Bengal from jeels in the Uttar Pradesh to the kulams of Tamil Nadu from khadins of Rajasthan to khayals of Kerala from chores of Bihar to the beels of Assam. The diversity of wetland types in India is truly fascinating. You can see that both these ecosystems carry a variety of plants and animals which are adapted to their own homes. For example, where there is endless water, animals have fins to swim and gills to breathe. Terrestrial animals, on the other hand, possess limbs and lungs better suited to residing on land. Let us know about wetlands in more detail. Wetland is a generic term used for lakes, rivers, floodplains, estuaries, marshes, swamps, fens, bogs, tidal flats, mangroves, corals and other related ecosystems. Water is the key governing factor of plant and animal life within wetlands. In other words, wetlands are ecosystems at the interface of water and land. These are the transitional lands between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems where the water table is usually at or near the surface or the land is covered by shallow water permanently or seasonally. 
As mentioned earlier, there are various names by which wetlands are known. Wetlands can also be distinguished by several indicators and these indicators are presence of water throughout the year or during some parts of the year, presence of plants adapted to wet conditions also known as hydrophytes, example water lily, presence of soils that are saturated or flooded long enough favoring anaerobic conditions like hydric soils. Do you know that a convention on wetlands, an intergovernmental treaty was adopted on 2nd February 1971 in the Iranian city of Ramsar and since signed by 170 countries, defines wetlands as areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary, with water that is static or flowing, fresh, brackish or salt, including areas of marine water the depth of which at low tides does not exceed 6 meters. Wetlands cover a large number of inland aquatic systems such as swamps, marshes, lakes and peatlands, coastal and near-shore marine wetlands such as coral reefs, mangroves, seagrass beds and estuaries, and human-made wetlands such as rice paddies, reservoirs, impoundments, tanks and fish ponds. In India, wetlands are known by several colloquial terms such as um, sarovar, tal, jeel, chor, mon, path, beel, sharuvu and many others. What do you think? Where are the wetlands located? I mean at what place? Wetlands range from high altitude lakes of Himalayas, flood plains and marshes of Ganga, Brahmaputra, alluvial plains, saline flats of great Indian desert to extensive marshes and coral reefs bordering the country's coastline and islands. As per National Wetland Atlas, India has 15.28 million hectare area under wetlands accounting for roughly 4.7% of her land area. Let us now look at the various wetlands of India in detail. Wetlands in the Himalayas The Himalayas are dotted with glaciated lakes, swamps and floodplain marshes spread across Leh, Ladakh, Kashmir Valley, parts of Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. These wetlands support the flow of mighty rivers like Ganga, Brahmaputra and Indus and act as a buffer between glacial melt waters and outflow to smaller rivers and streams. Pasture lands fringing the wetlands are used for grazing livestock and are the home of several rare and endemic species of birds, medicinal plants and mammals. The second one are the wetlands in the Gangetic floodplains. The alluvial plains of river Ganges and the Brahmaputra have extensive riverine wetlands as floodplains and oxbow lakes. They are locally known as Mau, Beel, Chaur, Jheel or Jhabar. These wetlands sustain highly productive agriculture and fisheries and act as flood buffers. Third one are the wetlands of the Western Ghats. The Western Ghats, one of the biodiversity hotspots in India, is crisscrossed by numerous rivers and streams giving rise to swamps and marshes. The Myristica swamps found in the region are dominated by Myristica trees. Another one are the wetlands in the desert and semi-arid zone. 
the arid zone spanning Rajasthan and Gujarat are vast saline and monsoon fed freshwater lakes and reservoirs. The run of Kutch in Gujarat and salt lakes such as Loon Karan Sar in Rajasthan are some of the characteristic wetlands of this part. Next are the wetlands in the Deccan Peninsula. The Deccan Peninsula region has few natural wetlands and is mostly studded with constructed tanks providing water for various human needs besides serving as nesting, feeding and breeding sites for a large number of birds. We also have wetlands in the coasts and islands. The narrow plains of the east and the west coast and islands harbour a range of coastal wetlands such as lagoons, salt marshes, mangroves and coral reefs. Chilka in Odisha, Pulikat at the border of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, Point Kalimere in Tamil Nadu, Ashtamudi in Kerala are major lagoons. Mangroves are found along the coastlines of nine states and three union territories in India. Sundarbans in West Bengal, Bitar Kanika in Odisha, Pishavaram in Tamil Nadu and Andamans are major mangrove areas. Gulf of Kutch and Gulf of Manar and the islands of Lakshwadweep and Andaman and Nicobar have major reef areas in the country. Last variety of wetlands are the wetlands in the northeast. Located at the junction of Indian, Indo-Malayan and Indo-Chinese biogeographic regions, the northeast zone is considered the gateway of Indian floristic and faunistic diversity. Several rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, waterlogged areas and oxbows, especially in Asamambhar, Pachapadra, Didwana. This was all about various wetlands found in the Indian subcontinent. You will be surprised to know that wetlands are the only ecosystem to have a dedicated multilateral environmental agreement of their own known as the Ramsar Convention. The convention was signed in 1971 at the Iranian city of Ramsar, located on the Caspian Sea shoreline. It is an intergovernmental treaty providing the framework for national action and international cooperation for the conservation and wise use of wetlands and their resources. The convention entered into force in December 1975. Let us now try to understand more about the Ramsar Convention. Under the three pillars of the convention, the contracting parties commit to some of the important points. Number one, work towards the wise use of all their wetlands. Number two, designate suitable wetlands for the list of wetlands of international importance, that is the Ramsar list and ensure their effective management. Number three, to cooperate internationally on transboundary wetlands, shared wetland systems and shared species. For your information, there are 172 contracting parties that have designated around 2,500 wetlands spanning more than 250 million hectares as wetlands of international importance under this convention. In India, the Ramsar Convention entered into force on February the 1st, 1982. Do you know that Wetlands Day is also celebrated worldwide? Yes. 2nd February is celebrated as World Wetlands Day Worldwide. India has designated 75 wetlands as Ramsar sites, also known as the Amrit Dharohar. Dear learners, we learned lots of things about wetlands today. 
Let us now recall what we learnt in this session. We learnt about wetlands in detail and what they are known as in various parts of India. We learnt about their distribution and the convention on Ramsar sites. Let us now try to solve a few questions. The first question is, name three colloquial terms that are used for wetlands. Question number two. In India, the Ramsar Convention entered into force on? Question number three. World Wetlands Day is celebrated across the world on which date? Dear learners, hope you have understood the various aspects of wetlands. Try finding out the names by which wetlands are known in your locality. Thank you.